Welcome! And in today's video, I'm going to make with you an easy crochet beanie. In this video, I'll be using Knit Cut Chunky Wool. It's about a 5 or 6 weight. My K hook. Handy pair of scissors. And of course, my darning needle. Make sure that the eye is big enough for some nice chunky yarn. I'll also have some pom-pom options available. Let's get started. For this beanie, we're crocheting from bottom up from the band upwards. We'll start with a slip knot and then chain nine. Now we'll slip stitch in each of the chains. So skipping the first loop, we'll insert our hook into the next loop, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and then pull through the loop. And we'll repeat slip stitching all the way until we reach the end of this row where we'll have eight slip stitches. Once again, each slip stitch, we insert our hook, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and then pull through the loop. And we repeat this in every stitch until we get to the end of the chain. At the end of the chain, we should have eight slip stitches. So once we get to the end, we'll want to count our stitches. Two, four, six, eight. Perfect. Chain one, and then we're going to turn our piece. Now we're going to insert our hook back loop only in the first stitch, yarn over, pull through the loop, pull through the loop on your hook. And we'll repeat this for each of the eight slip stitches. So insert in your back loop only, yarn over, pull through the loop, pull through the loop on your hook. Insert, yarn over, pull through the loop, pull through the loop on your hook. And we'll repeat this until we get to the other side of this row. Once we get to the end of the row once again, we're going to chain one and then insert our hook in the back loop only, yarn over, pull through one loop and then pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through back loop only, then the loop on our hook. And again, we continue this for the eight slip stitches that are across this row. From this point on, we pretty much continue the pattern of creating rows with eight slip stitches and a chain one turn until the entire band reaches about 19 inches long and stretches about 24 or 25 inches long. So you're welcome to, at this point, pause the video and continue making your band rows until it reaches your desired length then I will meet you on the other side of this band where we will then join it. Be sure that every so often you take a pause while you're creating your band to make sure that you're not dropping any stitches or accidentally adding any on. Two, four, six, eight. We're in good shape. Let's keep going. We still have a few more inches to go. So now I've reached my desired length. It's about 19 inches and I know it stretches to about 24 or 25 inches um, based on my yarn. You'll have to test your own yarn. With this merino yarn, there's quite a bit of give. So based on this yarn, this wool yarn, um, it comes out to about 40 vertical columns. So if I count it, two, four, six, I end up with about 40 columns of crochet slip stitches and as you can see here I'm holding down the end and it reaches 19 inches but when I stretch it it goes as far as 25 even 26 if I stretch it to the maximum now that'll be comfortable because it'll be able to stretch to any average size adult's head 
Now we're going to seam together the two seams so that we form the band. And once these seams are joined together, we'll be able to create the rest of the hat working from the bottom upwards. Now we want the wrong side to be facing us when we join. And the way you can tell it's the wrong side is because you have the two half slip stitch sides. So we're gonna join the half on the right and the half on the left to form a full rib. So insert your hook into the right side and insert your hook into the loop and pull the loop through into the other side to join the two sides together. Now yarn over and pull through. And now remember in the starting chain how we only went through one loop? Well, you're gonna go through the two other loops of the starting chain and then insert your hook on the back loop only of the other side of the seam. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. So once again, insert your hook into the next two loops of the starting chain and the back loop only, only of the left side then yarn over and pull through all the loops. Now we're slip stitching across and joining. So again, insert your hook into the two loops in the starting chain, the back loop only on the other side and pull through all the loops. So continue joining this entire seam of the band. And by the end, we should have eight slip stitches. There we go. And now when we invert it and look at the right side, it looks like a seamless column. So you can't really tell where the band begins anymore. And then from here, we can work our way up and finish the hat. We're gonna work along the top edge and work our way up. The way that we create the foundation row on the band is we're gonna chain here to lock in our stitch. Then we're gonna single crochet right here beside the rib. Okay, so get into the meaty part of the rib and we're gonna single crochet. So we're inserting our hook, yarning over and pull through both loops. So insert, yarn over, pull through the stitch, yarn over, pull through both loops. Again, insert into the rib, yarn over, pull through the stitch and pull through both loops. Now continue this beside every single rib until we come back to meet the first stitch. Now as we're moving along, make sure that the tension of the single crochet isn't too tight because you want this single crochet to be able to stretch in the same capacity as the band can stretch. See? You don't want there to be like a really tense single crochet here because then it'll hurt the person's forehead. So just continue single crocheting until we finish the perimeter of the band and then we're going to join and work in a spiral. Now as we come to approach our starting single crochet, we'll insert into the first single crochet slip stitch and now we're all ready to create the body of the hat from the band up. For this hat we're going to use the half herringbone stitch all the way up the hat. Begin our half herringbones we're going to chain two then yarn over and insert our hook in the first single crochet of the previous row. Pull through the single crochet and take that loop and pull through the next loop then yarn over and pull through both loops. So once again, yarn over, insert your hook into the single crochet in the previous row, yarn over, pull through the stitch, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into the single crochet from the previous row, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. 
yarn over, insert into the previous stitch, pull through the stitch, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. And then continue this half herringbone stitch all the way around the band until you come to meet the first stitch. And then we're going to continue working in a spiral. As we approach the end of this row with our half herring bone, we're going to insert our hook into the chain two that started this row, then do a half herring bone, and then simply continue the half herring bone stitches in a spiral in every previous stitch of the previous row. If you would like to take a stitch marker, you can also mark the starting stitch where the second row began. There we go. And now we're gonna continue crocheting in a spiral all the way up until the height of our hat or our hat body reaches about six and a half inches tall. And then we can begin our decrease. So if you'd like to pause the video, you can go ahead and keep crocheting upwards and I'll meet you at about six and a half inches height. Okay, so, so far I've crocheted six rows and the total height of my body is six inches. I want to get to about six and a half and each of my rows is about half an inch. So one more row would be perfect. So here we go, one more row. And we have now reached our seventh row and our six and a half inches. We'll just double check our height. Perfect, six and a half inches. And then we're going to start our decrease. For this decrease row, the stitches will be half herringbone together, then three half herringbones, then another half herringbone together, then three half herringbones, and we'll repeat this till we come to the beginning of the row again and then we're going to further decrease on the next row but don't you worry i'll take you through each stitch let's get started yarn over insert your hook into the stitch yarn over pull through the stitch pull through one loop yarn over insert your hook into the next stitch so we're decreasing yarn over pull through the stitch pull through one loop you'll have three loops on your hook and pull through all three loops now go ahead and do a half herringbone in the next of the three stitches. Just one half herringbone in each of the next three stitches. And three. Now we're going to decrease stitch again. In our decreases, yarn over, insert into the stitch, pull through the stitch, pull through one loop, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, pull through the stitch, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Great, now we'll do three more half herringbones in each of the next three stitches. One, two, and three, and then we'll do another decrease her half herringbone stitch. And if you'd like to keep working, I'll meet you on the end of this row. Just continue the decrease after every three half herringbone stitches.
Now I'm at the end of the row and completing my last decrease. And now I'm starting the next row. So it's one half, half herringbone crochet, another half herringbone crochet in the next stitch, and then in the next two stitches we're going to half herringbone together. So one half herringbone in the next stitch, one half herringbone in the second stitch, and then decrease in the next two stitches. So one half herringbone, another half herringbone in the next stitch, and then a decrease. So basically there's two half herringbones in each, there's a half herringbone in each of the stitches, but we're only doing two of them in between the decreases. Feel free to pause the video and continue this row of decreases until you reach the end of the row and I'll meet you on the next row. We're now at the end of this row so we just did one two half herring bones in each of the previous stitches and now we're going to do our last decrease for this row. Now we'll start our new row. We're only going to put one half herring bone single by itself and then we're going to decrease into the next two stitches and then one half herring bone in the next stitch and then we're going to decrease. So every other stitch that we do is going to be a decrease for this row. And we decrease again. And now we're completing our last decrease in this row. So you can see here is our last decrease. Now for this next row as we started, every single stitch is going to be a decrease. So we're going to be combining every two stitches into one using our half herringbone together stitch. And we're going to continue this all the way around, reducing the number of stitches until there are only six stitches at the top of the hat. Just five or six stitches and then after that we're just going to bind off and sew in our ends then cinch the little hole closed at the top of the hat. And then of course after we cinch the top of the hat we will weave in all of our ends. So now I've decreased every stitch and I'm at the point where I'm just about at the last six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and I'm just going to join these last two stitches to make about six stitches left and bind off. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So I'm going to close this off and leave enough to cinch the top of the hat shut. Then I'm going to weave in my ends. Look at that! Lovely! Now I'll just close that top off and weave in ends and get my handy dandy darning needle. Make sure the, the eye is big enough for whatever bulky yarn you might choose today. And I usually start off cinching the top of the hat with the right side facing out just so I know that I make it look pretty before I put the, uh, the yarn into the hat and weave in the ends. So let's cinch off this hat. I just go around the edges grabbing each of the stitches nice and tidy. Lovely, and then pull it, and then I just go right into the hat. Oops. I don't pull it too, too tight so it doesn't pucker or make the the shape of the hat stranged or pinched anywhere. And I pulled the end into the hat so I can weave in the rest of the ends. Okay, let's weave in those ends, folks. 
You know, honestly, weaving in ends is like my least favorite part of making things, but you know, it's so important because you want to finish the piece off nicely. Now I left this last piece to the end and I won't fast forward so you can see that when you do the seaming and weaving in of the last end that binds the band together, you want to make sure that you don't pucker anything and but you hide it well enough that if you can make that band look seamless and that you can't tell where it started and ended, then to me, that is a beautiful hat. So that's exactly what we're doing today and you can't see it. So perfect. Now we'll put the right side out and just shape it out a bit. Ta-da! Lovely. Now one of my favorite parts is picking a pom-pom for the hat. Can you guess which one I picked? Yay! Friends, if you enjoyed any part of this video, I hope you will like and subscribe. And also, if you feel like you would like to join my membership group to help support the channel, feel free to. And until then, I wish you a happy, safe, and healthy handmaking life. Have a great time, and I'll see you next time, folks.